Hi, my name is Pascal and welcome to the Aristides factory in Harlem, the Netherlands, where we make Aristides guitars. Um, we've done a factory tour a couple years ago when things were a bit different and we were at another location, so we felt it was the proper time to do a new one for you guys, where we just walk around the factory, show all the aspects that are involved in building an Aristides guitar, um, yeah, and just take you on a tour through the shop as if you were here. We have a lot of people who are interested in our guitars, um, want to know how we build them, uh, why we do things certain ways, and not everyone has the possibility to just, well, fly over to the Netherlands and, and give us a visit. So that's why we're doing this right now. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting uh, stuff we want to share with you guys. We've got some new models. We've got the 060S fan fret. We've got the 070S fan fret which I don't see here right now but we have it um, we've got some really cool new finishes we've got the new upcoming R series and I'm just here to well walk you through the factory and we'll touch everything and show you everything uh, meanwhile this is already turning into quite a spontaneous event Timo and uh, Timo Sovers and Paul Oz walked in and Timo is here to get one of his guitars set up again for tour uh, and Paul is here to well to be the moral support of Timo. And uh, yeah, I think we should just go downstairs and get it started. Okay, so uh, first off, we should probably start where we actually start, which is uh, in the uh, in the area where we make the bodies of the guitar. So we're gonna walk in here. And over here, we, uh, we made the bodies of our guitars, so I'm going to close the door real quickly because people are actually working here, so we, uh, we have to watch the noise sometimes. Uh, so yeah, uh, one of the well, biggest things about our Steve's guitar is that it's not made out of wood. Um, people, people always ask, okay, what is the material exactly? And it's, it's not really that, it's not a secret, it's not something special. What we do, uh, we build an exoskeleton out of uh, uh, we have an outer shell, which we can sand and, and paint, and we have layers of glass fiber and carbon fiber creating an exoskeleton of a guitar body. Uh, over here we have Tim, who is working on this right now. Um, as you can see, this is all basically hand work. It's all brushed in, layer by layer by layer. It's a lot of, well, detailed work that takes a lot of experience to really pull off. Um, in the beginning, when we started this, we could barely do one body in one day with one person. You actually needed two guys to pretty much pull that off. Uh, Tim, uh, who runs this area, managed to optimize it um, that far that we can now do four bodies with just one person with like perfect preparation and time management. So we can do that right now. We're always looking into ways to, 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 to make even more, um, optimize everything and see what happens. But um, that's how it's done now. At the end of the day, we basically close the mall hops and um, put them on each other and we tilt them and that's when we inject our secret uh, sauce, which is the Arium material. Arium is basically uh, a mixture of several resins and microscopical glass bottles. It's very uh, brittle and open, so inside the body you'll basically have a million tiny air chambers, uh, creating a very resonant body. We have the carbon fiber, in the neck, the glass fiber, the entire construction is very, very solid, giving you a guitar that's, well, extremely resonant, has a lot of sustain. It's all one piece, so you have no neck joints or, uh, or something like that. And once um, a body is made, it basically comes out like this. It's still very, very lightweight. Um, you can already hear how resonant the material is. Um, it doesn't look too sexy or anything, that's why we have all the cool paint jobs. Um, it almost feels like, you can almost not imagine that this turns into a finished guitar you just saw upstairs. Um, but it does, and it works pretty well. Um, as you can also see, uh, the bodies come out pretty pretty uh, rough still. So there's, there's a lot of unevenness and a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff going on there that you don't want on a guitar where you get the paint on. So basically, a lot of our time goes into sanding the bodies and getting them perfectly prepped for painting. Um, so that's uh, that. What else there to see in this room? Well, Tim is here putting the carbon in the neck, which is pretty cool. 
and uh, he has a really cool mask nowadays too. Just to make sure this is not, it's not like we use like, it's very damaging for your health to inhale some of this, but if you work uh, on this kind of stuff all day long, we just want to make sure we have the, the proper safety measures and he's not, and everything's filtered and stuff. Um, the Arium actually gets mixed over here. This is, uh, well, the mixing area. And Arium it consists of several different components, which we all mix over here using these pumps. You can see some colorful pumps as well. Uh, that's for the new R series or RAW series, which I will get to later on. Um, so yeah, that's basically what happens here. Uh, once the body is made, is made and fully, uh, fully, uh, fully ready to go, they get moved to uh, the next area, which is basically the heart of everything, the sanding area where we, from where out, like the ne all next steps are controlled. So. Let's walk over there. Take a little trip outside. <sighs> so this is the area where we route and, and do all the all the leveling of the fretboards and see uh, the CNC machine. We should probably start over here. Yes. Okay, so basically, uh, we're a custom guitar company mostly. Uh, so people order guitars with certain specs, and we start to build them for them. Um, it's probably best to just show you how that whole process goes. So we get an order in, we have certain specs, like all discussed out with the customers, we're ready to go, and we get the order in production. Basically everyone gets their own production number, and we start up uh, the production line. So this is a body with a number on it, uh, the data on it, um, and it gets in line for production. Then the first step basically is to sand them around the edges to make sure those are smooth already and we get the, the tuner holes in. Um, if you go past this rack you see guitars in different stages. Here for instance we already have one with a, with a fretboard on, with the cavities in, routed and pretty much ready for, for fretting and so on and so on. Um, for the fretboard material, that's probably good to tell you too. Um, this is not wood either. In the past we used uh, wooden fretboards for our guitars uh, because, well, we felt at the time that that was the best option. But our guitars are not uh, affected by changes in humidity or barely affected by changes in humidity and temperature. So we basically wanted a fretboard material that would be the same because with wooden boards you would still have the possibility that they could move a bit um, and you have to work around your truss rod. Um, nowadays we use rich light. Rich light is a material that's used a lot in the world. It's used for skate parks, it's used for kitchen trays, for all kinds of stuff. There are some guitar companies working with it as well. Uh, rich light is, and uh, I think that's not the correct description, it's um, a combination of phenolic resins and, and recycled pressed paper. Um, it leads to a fretboard that's it's a hard material. It, uh, in terms of sound, it's basically in between. It has the tight uh, bottom end of ebony, but it also has the snappiness of maple. Uh, so you get kind of like the best of both worlds in that sense. Um, we, um, I remember when we tested it for the first time, we were like, okay, if it sounds 80% as good as the ebony board that we were using at the time, we would just be happy with it and ready to go because we want to create a guitar that is a tool for a musician that always delivers whenever you want it to deliver. Um, and when we tested it, we were, we were sending them out to artists and just seeing what they got and we got nothing but great responses and people really, really were happy with the sound that we got out of it, as were we. So we were, it was an easy decision to completely move out to Rich Light. Um, so yeah, that, that's what we have here. Rich light also comes in another color. We have the black rich light and the light rich light. Sounds identical, feels identical, just gives you more of a maple, maple vibe to it. Um, so yeah, the guitars all uh, move around. 
here until they're ready for pain, which we can get to in a minute. It's probably cool to walk over there and, and show you how we get the fretboards on, how we route the cavities, and how a guitar gets to this space. And I'm probably going to ask Terrence over here if he could help us showing how we level the frets in a minute. Oh, Mark is already doing it. Sorry, Terrence. We don't need him actually. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, so yeah, here we see some guitars that are um, ready to, or just got their fretboards glued, glued on. Here's a really cool one with a custom inlay we did for a customer that is a fan of a certain video game. Um, this, uh, basically what we do, we put the guitar here, um, we use epoxy glues, um, we get the truss rod in first, then we use epoxy glues to get the fretboard on. Um, we, we put them in class for a day and the fretboard is off. That's a really simplified version. Um, after that, the guitar usually gets moved to the CNC machine we have over here. What we see over here is he over here is currently getting uh, tuner, tuner holes into guitars. That's all programmed in. We, we didn't have this CNC machine until two years ago. We used to do everything with mold, a custom like molds uh, and done, did everything by hand. Uh, we're very happy that we now have a CNC machine because it's just, it makes our life so much easier. It's more precise where you constantly have to do the same thing on, on, on a guitar. You just want it to be as consistent as possible and we're, uh, it makes our life a lot easier. Hopefully in the near future we'll get a our robot arm too, to do more of uh, the routing with that. We're working on that. We're, tr we're, we're constantly trying to find ways to make our lives easier, make production go quicker, and make it even more consistent and better. So that's what happens over here. Um, Martin over there is currently leveling uh, a board, getting it ready. And uh, next step is getting the frets in, and after that you're gonna level the frets. You don't have an example of that here, right? Um, yeah, maybe. How we do that? It's pretty cool to show you guys how we level the frets because we always, um, and we can do that at, at assembly too. No worries. Yep. Show the leveling. But basically, our whole thing with frets, we only use stainless steel Jaskar frets um, because. Uh, we, like again, our guitars are tools for musicians. We just want to make sure they always deliver and are as durable as possible. Stainless steel is, well, a perfect material for to just last, well, yeah, well for a really, really long time. Uh, so we don't even offer nickel frets anymore. Um, and basically, Martin, what Martin does here, he, t he does 95% of the leveling work of the frets already happens here, so we don't have to do it at assembly. Uh, at assembly, the guys basically just check up, so they do like two or three quick, quick runs to check it out, and then they so they can focus fully on dressing the frets and making sure everything feels flawless. Yeah, so that's what happens over here. Um, let's move back to to the sanding area. Try to get this open. Um, over here, uh, Terence is sanding sanding a guitar. Sanding the guitars is a big, big part of, of what we do. As I just explained in the, in the laminating area, a guitar that, um, that comes out of the, of the mold is still very, very rough and edgy. And if you would paint, put paint on this, it would look disgusting. Uh, so we need to make sure that everything is perfect. Everything is as smooth as, as possible without any flaws. Over here, you can see Terry's, how far along is this one? Almost there, right? Almost there, working there. On, the, on, the, on the edges. See, a lot of work is, is in, in this area. As soon as it's fully sanded, um, we get the primer paint on, which is the next step we'll show you. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Terrence? You have a magic trick ready or something? Terrence is always the entertainer. We have close <laughs> communities on Facebook, and he is, we have a thing called Terrence Thursday, where he actually always pulls up. Something crazy. <laughs> so this is, this is your time to shine. I'm not gonna take it away from you. Okay, look at this. Mm. <laughs> hey.
I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Darren. You're welcome. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, guitars that are ready for uh, for primer. We always take them in badges, so we have about 10 guitars uh, that are ready to get primer on, and uh, we move into the paint booth and get the primer on. Usually, for for light colors, we use this grayish white primer, and for um, I'm always looking at the names so I don't put them back in the wrong place because that could be a disaster. Um, and for the darker guitars, we use the black primer. So yeah, when this is done, we sand these back again. There's, again, there's a lot of sanding involved there. There's these. We sand this, these back completely and we get the, the color off. And we work with a lot of different finishes. Um, you guys probably know, we have probably seen our Instagram and on all the different colors we do. Uh, it's probably cool to show you guys how we do. Rodney is actually waving at me right now, our paint guy, that he's going to color some guitars, so it's probably a good time to go in. This is where we keep all our paints and stuff. Um, basically, if we can take a peek inside. Rodney is currently prepping this guitar to get color on. Let me ask him what it will be. Ropi, hey, Kleur? No, Kleur. What? Oh, yeah, we can go in in a minute. Uh, first, let me quickly explain uh, something about our paint process. Um, Basically, we, uh, the, the downside of what we do is that we don't have fancy wooden tops. So we, we, needed, we felt that we needed to, to really excel in the paint game to make sure that our guitars are, well, look, looked apart as well. Not just sound and played apart, but they look, looked apart as well. Uh, so we spent a lot of time developing different finishes. In the beginning, we were focused on, on mainly colors that we do in like matte finishes with pearls in them. Uh, in this rack over here, it's probably not an easy term, but you can see that a lot of these paint cans have the name Aristides on them. That's because they're custom made for us. We are they're custom blended, um, multiple multiple system, multiple uh, paint systems that make one finish together. Later on, we fur we took it to the next level with mainly because of our customers. Because usually our customers come up with crazy finishes and. We just do them and they become standard finishes. We have crazy sparkles, marbles, chameleons, sparkle marble chameleons, whatever people can imagine uh, and ask us to do. And if we're, if we're feeling like it, we'll do it. And it usually turns into an awesome project. Um, Rodney over here, I think it's cool. Let me check one thing with him real quickly. Like, get um, How much bad man looks going on? You should be fine. Here, Rodney is uh, getting some color for this one. Gonna do it now? Okay. talk a bit louder now because he's painting. Um, this is uh, going to be a uh, matte black guitar. So basically, he's getting the color on now, then sanding it back, and then put the final satin on. These are probably our most simple finishes, uh, the matte, satin, uh, matte finishes. We can, we can walk over there real quickly and show you some other finishes that we're working on right now, some more complicated stuff. Probably gonna leave Rodney to it. Gonna have some noise from the paint booth over here. Um, 
Yeah, right over here we have some chameleon burrs that we just finished um, or just colored. These are going to be sanded back again and then get the final gloss. Um, once the final gloss is done, we take several hours to make sure the guitars are buffed out to perfection. So there, the polishing happens over there. We can just walk towards that right now. These are, yeah, pretty cool. Show you some other stuff we are working on. This is a rainbow crackle, just a crazy project for a customer that we, well, we took quite a lot of fun. This is a chameleon marble finish. So you basically have a chameleon finish and a marble on top of it, giving a giving it a pretty cool look. And here we have some uh, pretty special bills. These are crystallized. We uh, have a new process, a new finish. You can basically get it in any color, but we just did black and black and silver for now. Uh, it's like tiny ice crystals you get all over the guitar. It's pretty pretty cool. We're pretty excited about this. Uh, and everything you see over here are basically just the raw guitars. Uh, gonna get back into that in a second. Here we have Nils. Nils is uh, polishing guitars. We actually asked him to to not do it for a bit when we were trying to shoot over there because it's really really noisy. Um, this is the part where I just talked about. So. Um, we have a really experienced someone uh, in Mills who sees everything on a guitar basically. You can, you know, he looks pretty serious when he's like, looking at it like that. But um, he sees everything, he has the eye for it, and he makes sure that all these guitars are fucked up to perfection. So that when you get your second million guitar, it is awesome and flawless. And just like the moment you get it out of the out of the case, you're like, wow, I'm just in your face. So that's what we constantly try to do. You can see it over here, all right? This is another one of the crystallized fields that are some of my personal favorites of the stuff we've done, uh, we've done recently. Um, to keep things going, we should probably uh, tell you guys some more about the raw guitars. So the big difference between a raw and and a regular guitar, the body structure is completely the same. We just dye the outer shell. So we dye the outer shell in the mold to give it a color. It could be orange, it could be uh, red, pink, anthracite, that's what we do nowadays. We get them out of the mold like these, they're just as rough, and they go through the, uh, entirely the same process. Uh, we can walk towards the raw guitar over there. I'll just, uh, we have to go back to the sanding room. It's kind of a maze here sometimes, if you don't know where you're going, but, uh, Pretty cool. So, oh, uh, the rods, you can see different raw guitars in process right now. The whole idea about the raw guitars is that we make a guitar, these are in sanding process, that we make a guitar uh, that is of the same quality as our painted Aristides guitars, but just has uh, a bit of, uh, is, is a little quicker to build, a little more affordable, and basically your work on Aristides. We get a lot of questions from people who are, well, I love your guitars, but they are just the price. The price is up there, and I, I, I yeah, it's hard for me to afford that. Uh, and we're not the company to do import models because I don't know. We just feel that what we do um, is something special. We want to do that over here, and we don't want to do any concessions in terms of quality. Uh, so we're thinking, how can we approach that and do something different? So we managed to dye the guitars in a mold. We hand sand them completely. Uh, giving them a cool look already, and then we put uh, titanium oxide nano coat. That sounds very fancy, but it's just uh, some stuff we, we, we polish on there uh, as a protective layer. Uh, and you basically get a guitar that has a raw industrial look and very smooth feel. I can ask Terence, can you get a finished raw guitar? Um, this is uh, this is in process. The, they they can be ordered as customs with all the options we get on the on the regular ones, but we, we are also constantly trying to build them as in-stocks. Um, so nowadays we can basically do a six-string anthracite um, raw guitar with, uh, with fishmans in it and all that stuff. So here we have a, a finished raw guitar. As you can see, it has a pretty, pretty raw feel. It looks like a very, very rough, roughly sanded. Um, 
dark gray finish with Fishman's in it and stuff. This is, this is your workhorse. We have a lot of customers that, uh, before we introduced them, we already took orders from our regular customers. Um, and everyone who visited the shop here and tried one, ordered one right away. Um, they, they sound slightly different. They're a bit more open even because there's no paint coating. And it's just a, a really cool thing. It's like a, a bare bones Aristides guitar. Um, and that's what we what we want it to be. So this is the when you have two six sparkle guitars at home, uh, which you don't want to take out to your shitty bar gig, gig but you want to play your Aristides on stage. These are easier to take out and rough up and, and can take a beating pretty well. So um, yeah, uh, what uh, what's next? Well, um, we already saw the painting over here. You still see the seven guitars that are ready to get painted like and yeah like i said about our customers they sometimes really want crazy stuff ridiculous guitars like these come out here every now and then pretty cool um if you like colors if you don't like colors just get a raw because yeah might be more your cup of tea over here we're going into assembly this is where we where we handle all the final steps uh, the guitars and it's quite busy here right now I think this is Timo's uh, Timo's uh, Timo's uh, Timo's so <laughs> Timo has one great skill, um, and that's he sweats a lot. Yes. Yeah, and his sweat is really, really aggressive. So when he and there's also so a lot of mucus involved. Yeah, yeah for definitely. Sure. Because I work so hard. You work so hard. Uh, so when Timo comes home from tour, his guitars are usually pretty dirty, and Ferdy, our production manager over there, who personally takes care of Timo's guitars, <laughs> because no one else is brave enough to touch them, uh, always has to clean them up and fix them up for Timo. Yeah, but yeah, the finish years. still looks pretty good. Like, yeah, this is, this is probably a great uh, testimonial for our, for our finishes that it can still look like this after three years of Timo. Yeah, it's Thanks the first pink one, this one. It was the first pink yep. one, it's his own color and everything. So. Uh, Pretty cool. Let me put this over here. So yeah, this is that's this what is, we always tell you. Yeah, but it wasn't. No, was this it? is this is the final assembly. So basically, when guitars are painted and we have all the parts ready, we get them over here. Um, you see a variety of different guitars with hardware already installed, uh, hardware still needing to be installed. Um, what would be cool to show you um, over here? I think Stefan, this is a wiring job we just completed. <laughs> Yeah, we take a lot of pride in our wiring. We really try to make sure that it looks as neat as everything on the outside. Uh, another thing we really take a lot of time for and pride in is our fret work. Um, as I just told you, in the fretting area, uh, most of the work is done there in terms of leveling. And we just have the tool in the back where we put the guitar on. And we just basically check up on all the frets over here. We put them in playing position and we go give it two, three runs just to make sure everything is perfect. Uh, and then the guys over there take a lot of time to dress the frets and get them ready um, for the perfect playing experience or whatever you would call that. Um, as you can see over here as well, is that we, we put protection tape on the guitars uh, when, we, when we finish them just to make sure that we don't scratch anything. A guitar is meant to be played and scratched, just not by us. That's why I'm, why I'm wearing gloves and why we're so careful um, with these. These are all guitars that are almost ready to go. Um, uh, I see a cool finish over here, so let's lock this up and show that to Another custom marble burst with white fishments. Unfortunately, still with protection foil, but a pretty cool guitar. Um, so yeah, once the guitar is completely um, completely ready, set up, triple checked, um, we get them ready to ship. Uh, we ship them in these mono bags with the Aristides logo. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it for a while, so we had a, a while where we didn't have them with the logo, but they're back. We're stoked about it. These are insanely good bags. We take a lot of time to properly pack them using packing peanuts and foam, and basically ship them all over the world with FedEx. Um, the mono bags and over here you, you can see a rack which is usually back in the safe but now we put it out here for the camera uh, a rack filled with guitars that are going to ship out in the next week or so so um, yeah i think that's basically the entire 
tour. Uh, we hope to be doing some more video series in the near future where we go more into detail on certain aspects. So do one quick video fully detailed about the painting process, about the fretting process, about the laminating process. We just want to make sure that we put more and more content out there for people to see. Um, if you have any questions, um, want to know anything about ordering a guitar, you can hit us up over email, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.